I'll never forget when we was at the Harris Stowe, and I had the students from Howard and the students from Harris Stowe, and they were sitting there saying, how do we move forward? And what they had said is that they've been meeting with conference calls, the head of all of the black student unions mm -hmm. from all the HBCUs been having conference calls. Mm -hmm. And they're working on coming up with a uh, communication that they're going to send to corporate America mm -hmm. and say, hey, you all don't step up and use your power mm -hmm. to influence Washington and influence everybody on the policy issues we need. We're going to start boycotting your products. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and you get you get black people all across the country and at HBCUs at that age demographic are the same one as the protesters saying, We're not gonna buy your beer, mm -hmm. we ain't gonna wear your Nikes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We ain't gonna do That's right. And that's why I'm saying that that there's this disconnect. See that that's that that would bring America to his knees. You think so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You let you let young people who spend the most money right now in disposable income, and and they're doing something that other young white people and other people can buy into. Absolutely. They can. It's something they can buy into and support. And then you start getting thousands. I told the guys if you put up a website, you send that letter out and put up a website. And you got 10,000 hits that say we're ready and we're on board. Whatever corporation you targeted, they're going to be knocking at your door. <laughs> they gonna be, and, I say, and then you had to tell them, say, now you have lobbyists in Washington. We want you to instruct your lobbyists that here's the policy we want you to support. As a when, when this thing about uh, Ray Rice just hit, and, and, and as the Bush said, NFL, we think we have a problem. <laughs> Well, and as a bus is on the tail for $1.6 billion over the next five years to go into an NFL coffers. And if ever heard and I they didn't have to tell it back. All they had to do was say, You got our attention. You got our attention. And these kids, and so what so you know, we need to get we need to get we need to support them and encourage them to move ahead on stuff like that because now you have this national footprint and it's and it's economic uh, 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 driven and when you start messing with the economics, Everything you start getting oh changing. my god, you, you want to see some results? I don't, I, say, I don't need another kid to die. That's right. <laughs> I don't need them to die. I just need them. To listen, and I never forget the, the, the head of the student union for how you know what he said. No, he was from Chicago. Young guy's up from Chicago, and he said, "We don't need." He says, "He said, he says Farrakhan, Jesse Jackson, and Reverend Wright." Uh -huh. Right, right, yes. uh, Reverend Wright. Yes. He said they're all in Chicago, less than three miles apart, and I ain't never seen them do nothing together. Mm -hmm. Wow. He said, he said, he said, we don't need him. He said, what we need to do as young folks is we need all the HBCUs to act together and to move together and support the same policy. And he said, we get that, we bring some change. So, so <laughs> on the NAACP's behalf, what steps are you taking to address that? Well, we got our young, our young, my youth leaders. I got my youth leaders working with those. HBCU okay. and saying you all need to continue to organize and bring that to fruition and that whatever you all need from us let me know because that is I told you you have no idea how powerful a tool that is if you can create it and put it in your hands and make it work mm -hmm. and, and, and so you know we haven't got an update that was a couple of weeks ago but that, that's one of the main things we put in there saying listen we we, we need to use the same thing that everybody else uses in this country to bring change in policy. And we can do it as long as we can bring a multitude demographically to the table on that same issue. The, 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 uh, the gay rights issue and, 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 and the marriage laws, come on. That movement could not have happened without the support of NACP and other folks who said, okay, it's a, it's a human rights issue. Said, ethically, morally, some of us may have some difference, but at the end of the day, it used to be a time when they told black people you couldn't marry white people. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, it, it, so, so, so I'm, you know, 
all of those type of issues, you know, there, there has to be a sustainable, concise movement, and it has to be a movement where we pull in all of the factions of this country in where they can buy into it and support it. You know, when we, when, you know, when slavery didn't end because of black folks, you know, there was a, <laughs> it was a strategic move <laughs> that had to happen because of some other things. And so sometimes we have to take advantage of those opportunities as they exist. So I'm all about the young folks and the energy, and I support it 100%. But I, what, I, what, I, what I need them to do is get with the other young folks who, who, who have a certain knowledge and skill base and be their army and allow them to be the generals and put those moves together. Because the same, the same young kids that I worry about on the front line of Ferguson or the same young kids that go out and buy uh, Chirac vodka and somebody's weed and putting some money in somebody else's hand and they still are suffering from the same despair. <laughs> you, you, you get what I'm saying? And so I'm telling them, listen, if you're going to fight, fight it all the way. Fight it in the street. But fight it with your pocketbook and don't spend no money on all this. Hit them in the pocket. Yeah. I mean, that gets people's attention real quick if you hit them in the pocket, period. From organization to individuals. So I, I understand that point. And then the other thing that we have to do, we have to change the narrative of this whole thing. Yes. Ground Zero has to be viewed in a bigger content than Ferguson. Ferguson is a small community of 20,000 people. Round Zero is all of North St. Louis City, North St. Louis County, East St. Louis. But the, the origin of this problem is in North St. Louis City. And this is why Better Family Life is initiating a Page Boulevard initiative. Um, to one, finish out the Better Family Life Cultural Education Business Center. We are uh, attempting to raise $2 million to complete that. Um, and one of the things that we will have in that uh, uh, facility is a business center to teach entrepreneurial skills as well as to cultivate entrepreneurs. And then the bigger vision is to redevelop Page Boulevard. In fact, again, I, I talked about Adolphus having a project on Page in Union. Uh, it was an old police station. And so we're taking that same boundary from Union all the way up to city limits and to uh, approach the city to give us all of the LRA properties. These are properties that have been abandoned and that have reverted back to the city so that we can convert them into uh, affordable housing for those folks in the neighborhood. We are talking to the city about let, let us help them and they help us uh, update their master plan for that area because all of the wards had master plans done in the 70s and the 1980s. Outdated. They're outdated, but we can dust them off and update them and look at uh, uh, retail establishments, professional establishments, so that our neighborhoods become uh, workable, livable neighborhoods. Part of the disconnect with young people is that they don't see employment opportunities in neighborhoods that they live in. They don't see, they don't see um, 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 job training. They don't see uh, um, art museums and uh, art galleries, uh, uh, accounting offices, legal offices. These are supposed to be places that young people have their first employment opportunity. If you want to be a, if you want to be a lawyer, you should be working with a lawyer, even if it's no more than sweeping the floor and in a law office, clerking, accounting, the same thing. But we want to put all of those things together on Page Boulevard uh, to to get investments in, in city and private sources to do uh, streetscape redesign, etc. 
and then do the social services in those communities. Make sure that that, that community has proper health care. To make sure that um, they're able to take advantage of all of the services that the city has promised them. And then to also make sure that they're connected to other thriving cities. North St. Louis should be connected to South St. Louis. Uh, North St. Louis should be connected to the county so that we create a corridor of development, a corridor of educational learning, a corridor of retraining, all on Page Boulevard. And if we're successful with Page Boulevard, then we move to Martin Luther King. And then we just keep moving the needle as Adolphus talked about earlier. It's trying to move that needle to make sure that whatever those numbers are, that we start seeing a reduction in those numbers, a reduction in poverty, reduction in crime, reduction in um, schools, uh, uh, youth dropping out of school you know, at a young age, reduction in people going in and out of the criminal justice system. This is what we want to in, um, impress upon all of the powers that be, the, the political power structure, the corporate power structure, that yes, it's good to say that Ferguson needs some services, some attention, but if you're going to be really serious in dealing with the systemic issues and the systemic problems of poverty and crime and unemployment, you got to come to North St. Louis and you got to start on Page Boulevard. Well, I, you know, listen, I agree 100%. At the end of the day, your environment has more impact and more influence on what you will do, what you will become at the end of the day than any place else. And, and trying to create that conducive environment for, for a person to raise a child, a person living at the end of the day, what he just described is this, the American dream. Exactly. And we all want the American dream. Exactly. We, we all don't want to... Yes. Bit leaves and, right, right. and the you would find the majority on something with that American dream that a, he just described. A safe neighborhood, <laughs> a place to raise your family, yeah, 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 a place whatever. to have fun. Yeah, they just want the American a, dream. A, you can call home. Yeah, they want that American dream.